10, baby. Just so y'all know, too, the six God has blessed us this week. That's why I had to go on the OVOT tonight, man. The six God has blessed us this week. Not only a new track, but an album name announcement, the title, and uh, a leak. In case y'all didn't hear about the leak, I'm going to talk about it real quick. I got a show for y'all, man. Catching up on Mac, episode 10. Uh, shout out GG Fultz in the building. Perez Virtual Fitness will be in the building this evening. I'm excited, man. These are longtime friends, people that I have not gotten to keep up with and catch up with in a long time. It's going to be a great, great vibe this evening. Frankie's in the building. Hey! We're going to be going live in a second. I hope y'all are ready. I had to start it off with some Drake because the Six God has blessed us this week. Frankie, I know you, you and Jeff are, are Drake fans, at least from what I remember. And um, the Six God has blessed us, man. The Six God has blessed us. Gave us a brand new track, Last Now, Cry Later. Uh, gave us uh, the title of the album to come, um, uh, Certified Lover Boy. And also, a little leak came out this past week, man. Intoxicated. I'm excited, man. I'm excited. It's a box. I had to put on the OVO shirt to make sure that this was legit tonight. Catch you on that. Episode 10. We here, baby. As always. As always. I need to make sure I, 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 I push it, man. Jameson. Every episode of Catching Up a Mac is strictly fueled by Jameson. Um, oh, low, low, low. Strictly fueled by Jameson. The one and only Jameson. I'm not sponsored yet, but it's coming. They're going to send me bottles. Just even just one for every show. I would love that. The wifey would be happy, too, because we could start cutting out our, uh, our expense for Jameson. Lori. It's going to be a good time tonight, man. Perez Virtual Fitness will be in the building. Frankie's already in. I'm going to get with her real quick. I'm going to get with her real quick. Um, I'm excited. I'm really excited. I right, said, so that's why we have to go on the Drake today. We got blessed by the six God this week, man. Y'all get your drinks ready. Rocky, just jump in the building. What's going on, man? I know you're a big fitness dude, man. You're going to like what we got going on tonight, man. Forgot. <laughs> Talking to the white people. Okay. All right. Well, all right. Feeling sorry for the runner up. I'm still awake getting money when the sun is up. And they keep saying how they need me to deliver. Cause they hate it when a rookie star doesn't put the numbers up. Man. Episode 10, I'm really excited, man. I'm really excited. Catch up with Mac, episode 10. One and only Perez Virtual Fitness. Frankie, I think, I think we can start this. As soon as we start this, more people will jump in, too. I, I swear we get this going. Let's see. Some of the requests, there we go. If y'all sip in tonight, drop your, drop your drink emojis in the comments, too. If y'all need questions for them tonight, drop all the love right there in the comments. Bitch, I'm out of here. All right, Frankie, I'll send you the request right now. Here we go. Yeah, I also been up long with converse with you thousand man. Wow. I swear I'm chillin' shit, I'm killing shit. Shout out to the niggas. Hey. <laughs> yeah. What's good? How are you? I'm doing so good. How are you doing? I'm good. I was enjoying the jams. I was over here rocking up 
Join it. No, those, are some, those are some throwback Drizzy tracks too. It definitely came out around the time that all of us used to kick it, especially with uh, Instagram. They're, they'd be muting you whenever you play like legit music, you know what I mean? So I was like, okay, okay, well, I've got a bunch of undiscovered Drake music that y'all can't mute me on. So I was like, I'm gonna play that tonight. Can't, you can't mute it, you can't mute no. it. The reason I wanted to do it, I, I don't know if you and Jeff are still big Drake fans, but over here, the sixth god, he is, he is worshiped very re religiously in this house, so. Forever a Drake fan. There's never, I don't think there's been a single he's dropped or an album he's dropped that we haven't been like, this is lit. This is Oh, fine. yeah. Oh, and my fact, God. When our oldest was young and the Hotline Bling song came out, that was her jam for the longest time. We were like, we, I don't know if she should be listening to this. She's only three. And she used to say, right here, right here. <laughs> <laughs> Death is here. He's just, he's just plugging in the, our iPad. Uh, so that way. It doesn't oh, no, no. No, it's all good. It's all good. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Drake literally just dropped a brand new single for us, uh, Laugh Now, Cry Later. That's going to be on the album with Lil Durk. Um, he just titled the album Certified Lover Boy. I'm excited for that. And I don't know if y'all got to hear the leak that came out, Intoxicated. Um, they have banned it all over the internet, but I do have a little snippet on my Twitter. So if anyone wants to go to my Twitter right now, I'll drop it, at Corey McBaby. Um, I've got the little snippet on there. I heard it could have Chris Brown on the track. I heard, uh, but we don't know just yet. Hold up. So, um, Jeff can jump in whenever, but, but let's, let's get this going. Cause like I was telling you on the thing, Instagram sucks, man. They cut us off at an hour, but okay. if the questions are just a tiny bit over, we could jump right back on and finish it. Um, but catch up on Mac episode 10. I'm so grateful, so blessed to be joined by the one and only Frankie Perez, virtual fitness. Jeff's going to jump in. Big shout out, man. Big shout out to y'all jumping in. Where's that boy? Where's that boy? Jeff P at man. Jeff Pizzle, Jeff Pizzle. Hey, mean, let me tell you, it's it's all about the lighting. Since I've been doing this show, I had to find the right spot. I've got like a reflector aimed at me right now. Jeff, what's going on? Boy, what man? up, bro? How you doing, man? This this is long, long time overdue. I was just telling the wife, I think last time I saw y'all, man, was maybe like 2011, 2012, you know what it was? I know when it was, because we listened to the song at your crib. Um, it was when ASAP Rocky and Chains and them dropped uh, uh, Fucking Problems. Oh. Uh. I remember yeah. because we were randomly listening to that at y'all's crib, I remember that. So it, whatever time that was, that's when it was. Was it, was it just, just parents' crib or our, our townhome when we used to live in town? Y'all's townhome. Okay, yes. Down home. Dang. Yeah, it's, it's just long, long overdue, long overdue. And like I said, um, now that I've, you know, I've got this going, I want to make sure that I highlight, you know, not only people that I know, but people that are doing things. And just, uh, I'm big about um, elevating your life and elevating your situation. And um, I would say that from what I've seen from y'all two, even though we haven't gotten to see each other or, you know, gotten to speak directly, uh, just from what I've witnessed, every Man, month, two months, three months, every year, y'all are elevating. Y'all are just climbing the cliff. And um, pretty much, I, I would say, a lot of people aren't going to understand this. Um, y'all aren't at the top of the cliff yet, but y'all are pretty much there. But what people don't understand is, when you're at the top of the cliff, the work doesn't stop. It gets harder. Um, it, it's more work. So um, I want to congratulate y'all on Perez Virtual Fitness. Yes, we, we need to make sure we shout that out. Congratulations. Thank you. Both Thank you. Both Thank you. Oh, thank you. We definitely you. appreciate that. For, for people that are watching right now, if they don't know, um, our relationship began when I started working at Spectrum, Gilbo and Tezzle. I met my boy Jeff P right here. Um, he was at just, yo, man, you, you were, man, it, it's crazy when you meet people and they're just so, I don't know the word I'm looking for, but it's like, um, it's like the friendship just comes so easy. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's natural. It's exactly. not like yeah, it's not pushed. Um, and for a lot of people that don't know, if y'all do know Jeff, he's a very chill dude. And I think you're still kind of got that same personality, but very chill. And for anyone that knows me, knows that I'm, I'm, I mean, it's everywhere. It is, it's wild. Um, he's so lit. To be good friends, man. It was dope. You came with me out to my 21st in Vegas. That was an event. 
And for people that don't know, I like to think that y'all's two relationship began at my apartment. <laughs> I like to think that's the kind of thing <laughs> that some of the, 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 what you, the family that we see right now, the Perez family, I like to think that it, it all began at that Silver Rock apartment when we used to all hang out <laughs> together and kick it. So um, for real, I'm really, I'm really glad to have y'all on tonight, for real. I can't, I can't act like that's not true. I, I, would, I would definitely blame it on Spectrum. And because when, when I started working at Spectrum, I was getting to know everybody and because you are a gregarious person and you're very uh, uh, hype. It was very, mm -hmm. your, your, your energy is very attractive. And so I immediately got to know you because first of all, you're the first face you see when you walk in the spectrum and your greetings were always genuine. So I was like, man, this guy, Corey, he, he cray. But I, I eventually was like, man, cool people. And then um, next thing I know, I'm calling you at the front desk asking you what is, uh, what uniform is Jeff wearing today? <laughs> <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> you were like, um, the red one? I remember that. <laughs> And then we I like that. It at your apartment, and that's when I really do think everything really started to fire off. So yeah, yeah. For for people that don't know, yeah, for people that don't know, my apartment was real close to the gym, so it's just like it was like a place for all of us to go kick it, have drinks, have fun, and um, yeah, man, I saw y'all. You know, I, I got to see y'all fall in love, and I, I got to uh, I got to be there for the birth of uh, of your daughter, Truly. Mm -hmm. um, not for the birth, but I remember going to. I think it was Crystal Rosa. All right. Ah, uh, that's right. People, right? Damn. Yeah. That's all up in our business. I love it. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Like I said, y'all are great friends. For everyone tuning in real quick, Bianca Chab, uh, Reagan Rangel, uh, looks like um, Marjorie Ortiz, Lee DB. Thank you so much for coming in. Catch you on Mac, episode 10. A uh, little special for me. May not mean shit to anyone else, but 10 episodes to me. I was talking about it in the post for y'all. That 2190 rule where the 21 days uh, uh, becomes the habit and the 90 days becomes the lifestyle. Yeah. I mean, of course, this is 100% my lifestyle. I'm a radio personality. But I just love this. I love getting to connect on such a personal level with everyone and getting to connect with the people that y'all know who are obviously going to be in the show. So um, everyone that's tuning in, catch you on Mac episode 10. The one and only Perez Fitness. Thank you, Jeff, man. Thank you. Perez Virtual Fitness. Thank you so much. <laughs> Of course, of course, every episode uh, fueled by Jameson, 100%. I see y'all got your drinks up. Cheers to YouTube, doing the damn thing. Um, let's get into it. So obviously everyone knows, pandemic. March 15th, I think March 17th is when they shut down all of our stuff here at our apartment. Everything hit. Y'all have two daughters. It's a full-on family life at home. Talk to me about pandemic life with the family. Uh, wow. <laughs> I would I'm say sure a, lot, a lot of parents uh, can definitely relate. Sometimes you're like, oh my God, can I just, sometimes you got to lock yourself in your closet or whatever. But I'll say deep down inside for the last 10 years, like tr yeah, truly 10, I've always dreamt of a time where I could get paid, but just stay in bed with my babies. <laughs> and then terrible things happen. And then it happened for real. And I still wouldn't change it because I love having my kids where I can see them and have them safe. Because that is like, I want to say most parents, like biggest paranoia or, or things like that, just not having your kids in a safe environment. I remember the first time our eldest went on a, a field trip. I was calling that teacher. I was like, all right, so you're going you're gonna to have her in your eye line the whole time, right? And I remember telling, truly, if you can't see the teacher, you've gone too far. You need to make sure you can see the teacher. You know what I mean? Just like stuff like that. So... The yeah. pandemic was as scary as it is and as, lot of, and as many people as it's affected. I will say, like, I'm definitely um, making lemonade out of it because uh, it also propelled us to, like, really push our virtual training, which we had actually started it two years ago when I left a public gym. And I went to a more private-based gyms on a corporate level. And I was really missing a lot of uh, my, the people who worked out with me. And so Jeff and I figured out a way to where I could train them, you know, online. And it was just kind of something I kept up with a couple times a week. And then the pandemic hit. And then I just, we, I just dove in. And then he dove in because his job situation changed. I don't know what's going on. Our, our iPad keeps like dark. Screensaver mode. Screensaver mode. So we're going to get up. 
Oh, oh, y'all might, or, or if you're able to turn it off real quick, you can turn it off real quick if you want. You might be able to. You're gonna make me do tech work, right? I, I'm a physical being, so <laughs> I gotta do tech. I just went to you too, and I was like, oh, y'all just sit back and relax. I was like, I'm gonna take care of everything. I can, but I cannot take care of the technical difficulties that are on y'all's side, Don. I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> um, Frankie, sorry, while you're working- we'll have to go to settings. We'll just get up from time to time. Okay, no worries, no worries. Um, I love what you said right there, Frankie, because a big, uh, a big thing that I, that's been resonating for me and that I've just been projecting onto so many others um, was adjust and adapt. And we're really at a time right now, uh, I'm the same here, you know, unemployed, out of the radio station, uh, radio changed, radio changed right now. Yeah. I would say if there was 5,000 jobs out there before for me to take, there is maybe, uh, maybe 1,000 a, a to 1,500 jobs available now. Um, and I think a lot of people have had a, a tough time with adjusting and adapting to the current situation that the entire country is in. But I really love what y'all have done. Jeff, tell me real quick, man, because um, let me tell you, it it's been tough for me. Uh, me and my wife have been together for, for nine years since 2011, married two. Um, and we have two nieces. So I feel like I can, I can kind of relate a little bit. I've, I've kind of become like the father figure in their life and like the dad and who they look up to. But let me tell you, man, especially with my mom, you know, always being from a single mom, uh, it can get overwhelming when it's just women around you. Let me tell y'all, um, it's, it's very overwhelming. Jeff, for all the girl dads out there, uh, speak to them. Let, just uh, what, what, are, what are some of the stresses that comes with that, but also at the same time, some of the joys that come with that? I mean, just just having them there, man, just having your family there is just like a blessing, you know what I mean? But I think there, there's struggles, but it's not like nothing that I can't handle, you know? Like you said before, like I got a chill personality, so it's like nobody could really break me down, like literally, like... They try. They try, but I mean... <laughs> they they, they don't. I believe, oh, man, I believe... I, I'm telling y'all, it... Man, it gets tough over here when we're watching the nieces and it's my wife and them too. And it's like a click. And I feel like I'm over here and I'm going up against three. And I'm like, man, I barely got enough strength for one. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, I, sometimes you just got to like, I guess, humble up and like, just like get in, do those little things with them. Even though they're doing little girly things, you got to jump in there and be that, that girl dad. You know what I mean? So, they uh, they, they're crazy about him. Like that yeah. he is the world. If anything, he gets on their nerves. Oh, really? okay, okay, okay. Oh, see, oh, I like how you flip it. Oh, I like that. I like that. I'm putting that one in my pocket. I'm, 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 just, right I'm just calling it like I see it, Corey. Just call it like I see it. Girl. Now, now, I hope, this isn't, I hope this isn't too personal. I know I've got two daughters. Are we ever expecting another Lil Perez uh, coming not, through? I love that. It's too personal. That's not personal. You, that's good. We're open. Um, so let me tell you this, uh, after Audrey was like running around and crazy, cause she's like mm -hmm. virtually mini me. So she has all the energy, all the back talk, time yep. 10, she's worse than me, but it's <laughs> super cute. We, we try not to laugh in her face. Um, when she grew out of that baby phase, I was like, man, you know, oh, we should, we should do it before they get too big, you know, before I don't want to do it, before my body's too old, which I don't really know if that's even a thing anymore, but. Um, he was like, nope, nope. After Audrey, nope, nope. Because she's so lit all the time. We didn't, we don't want to risk having another lit child. Cause that's <laughs> that's hard. Like she's the type that you keep. You have to tell her the same thing over and over and over, and she still doesn't. She'll be like, okay, I'm gonna go do it anyway. You know, that's that's her vibe. And then just recently, like I was like, yeah, I, I, now that I've been home with them uh, more than he has for the last couple months. I'm like, there's no way. <laughs> there's no and way. And that's what my question right now was alluding to, because now you've spent the full 24 hours, six and a half months of time with them. So it's like, I could see feelings changing. Yeah, but he actually the other day was like, we should have another baby. <laughs> 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 so I can take care of him while you go to like work that. and make cool shit out of metal? Fine, great, let's do that, no. I like that. I like that so much. Um, what's going on else during uh, the during you know the pandemic? Have y'all learned anything new? Like me and my wife have really taken this opportunity. Um, I've really wanted to get better at cooking, and I've really dived into just doing some some extra stuff and really diving into recipes. Anything else 
new at the at the Perez household in these six months? Oh, I'll start with mine because mine's small. His is really huge. Um, I got into uh, just marketing like professionally um, on a greater scale. I, we actually bought some programs. We actually bought a laptop and like just tried to upgrade everything we could with whatever nice. money we had to afford to, to spend. And so I've been like trying to crush my marketing game um, with graphics and, and uh, flyers and all kinds of things. Like I said, we're going to be getting up from time to time. I got the next three, babe. I got the next three. <laughs> so, um, so that's my little thing that I picked up during this pandemic. I guess a skill I would say I've always cooked and I've always baked, but um, this man over here has picked up several new skills since the pandemic. Um, Let's hear about it. I mean, basically, I, I work at a place called. No, Google. you should start with the small stuff, like what you done to this. What do you mean? Whatever. He's like fixed everything in our house. <laughs> okay, so also, also Jeff yeah. has become a Tim the Tool Man Taylor. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Tool yeah. Time. Okay. It's just like crunch time. Now it's like, you better look on YouTube. You better learn how to fix things. So it's like, I'm all about trying to learn how to keep up with the house, uh, keep up with the vehicles, you know what I mean? So it's like, I'm trying to like extend my building experiences with just creating new things and yeah. learning more about having a house, you know what I mean? Like, And honestly, I mean, save a lot of money in the process. That, oh, that's, that's, that's a must, man. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But other than that, I mean, like been cooking. I've seen you been cooking. Yeah, I've been uh, trying because, I mean, we're vegan, so we we gotta get like really creative when it comes to recipes. You know what I mean? So, I mean, we don't eat meat or anything like that. Like we, it's it's strictly plant plant life for us. You know, so in order to to have good meals in front of you, you gotta like experience with different spices and everything. You know, so yeah. I re we, we really enjoy it though like we 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 like creating new things and and um, well tell them tell them about your job because that's that's a new skill that a lot of care about. care about it so yeah i've been um since the pandemic hit um i started working with a buddy of mine we're, we're at this place called military metal art so basically we make fashionable art out of metal man we we create wow we make, like it's beautiful, beautiful stuff, man. I mean, heavy. Uh, yeah, but superb. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, you really gotta check it out because it's like it's one of, it's one of a kind work. You know, so I, I got I gotta check that out. Now, are you like the artist? You're the one creating the uh, art. You're like from your. I'm an apprentice, so okay. basically, like I'm kind of learning from the ground up and and just kind of picking up the new new things as 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 things come around. You know, but uh, I mean. It's a, it's just a, a smaller shop with just like three of us there at the shop or four of us including myself, um, and they're they're really good they're really experienced they've been doing it for plenty of years you know so I'm like really grateful to be oh. there and, and I'll be right back I'm gonna go get some art to be you. learning the skill because I I mean be a guy I always like work watching those freaking like forged and fire shows and stuff yes yes that's it that's what came to mind when you were talking about it so you're sitting there with like a welder yeah you know, like a Thing, yeah. right yeah so we we do that kind of stuff i i just made like a crazy like machete the other day <laughs> just crazy. just because i wanted to make I don't know my own weapon but is uh, that what we got right here like let's take a look i gotta see this. well no this isn't the weapon this was like this the first like piece, piece of art of... that we bought from this guy oh wow lift that up just a little bit or, or a little closer to the camera oh wow holy shit it's it kind of like a fall that's supposed to be like a fall leaf yeah, but he has like things that are bigger than our bodies and like Wow. Yeah, he's yeah. got contracts with like the military and things like that. So oh. he needs more help and he hired Jeff. Jeff, where's your machete? Oh, that's machete. My Go get your machete. I'll, I'll give you a well, so, hey, I just want to let people know for people that don't know, uh my guy Jeff right here is very artistic. Now when I was making music back in the early days, the early days, there almost was a Jeff P. Corey Mack track and Jeff was singing on it man so for people that don't know my guy right here was laying down vocals he was stacking he was harmonizing um it was almost there we had had a mishap um i love uh, that uh, song i love that song so I much I, I it was it, that song i wish it I was uh, it was a uh because uh, remember i used to use beats back then it was a briscoe beat um uh wayne might have been on that track i can't think of it but it was a briscoe beat and um 
You were killing it. I was so upset when I lost those files because you were killing it, man. Um, real quick, I, I want to talk to y'all uh, about this. One. You know, I want to get into y'all's fitness uh, company because that is what matters. That's what I make sure I want to make sure to highlight. But it's very important. And Frankie, you know about this. Jeff, you know about this. It's very important that you use your platform uh, for the right things and to speak on things that are wrong. So I first want to say rest in peace, George Floyd. Rest in peace, Ahmaud Aubrey, And rest in peace, Breonna Taylor. Uh, her murderers are still not locked up. They're still free. And these motherfuckers need to be locked up. So whatever needs to happen, that's what needs to happen. Frankie, I saw how vocal you were when the George Floyd murder happened. And um, I saw some of the backlash that you got from people, you know, using your platform to speak out against, against evil and to stand up against racism. Y'all have two daughters. And I know when our, our niece is 12 years old, how old, it's truly 11? It's 10. Um, 10, okay, yes. 10. Um, me and my wife didn't think that our niece really knew what was going on. Sure enough, uh, we don't let her on any other social media except for TikTok. Okay. Um, and sure enough, all of this was plastered all over TikTok. So she started asking us questions. And, you know, my wife is Mexican and my niece is Mexican. So of course, minority, I, I, I'm, I'm white, but it's, it's very important that your white privilege is used for the right thing. Yeah. And um, I just wanna know for parents out there that might find a hard time speaking to their children about things of this magnitude, is that a conversation that you maybe not had with your youngest, but is that a conversation that happened with truly then since she was old enough to comprehend like hate and love, she, I, I, you know me, I, I speak sometimes without her. Yes, and definitely. I, I just basically have kind of brought her up to realize like not everybody is great and not everybody's going to see things the way you see them. You know, Jeff is always like definitely second, seconding or is that, is that a word? Like just at least backing up or supporting the things that I'm saying. Yeah. And um, whenever there has been some kind of disgusting crime against a culture, um, uh, truly knows about it. Like, it's something that I'll discuss with Jeff. Like, all, there's, there's um, several stories that have really, really just got to my gut. And I vent, I vent a lot to Jeff. And, and um, Jeff just, you know, lets me lay it on him. And then before I know it, Julie's like, well, what, what are you talking about? And then I'll explain to her without too much detail yeah. uh, what person and what isn't being done or what people are saying to defend the actions of the actual criminal involved, you know. Um, by the way, um, I have always felt awful and, and shitty and angry and hatred and just all of that when a lot of um, terrible things happen to uh, people in my culture. And I am half white, but I'm also half black. And um, unfortunately, and fortunately, I really don't know which way to look at it being mixed. Yeah. And, uh, a lot of America just puts me in the category of black. I don't even get to be mixed. So um, I'll just adopt it because that's what it is, you know? Um, but like, I never really wanted my, my platform, even as I was growing, to be used for anything other than positive vibes and fitness and health. And I just snapped on, on the whole George Floyd thing. I just said, fuck it. Because I, I, why am I even being quiet? Like, I don't care if I lose followers because I feel this way, peace yeah. out. I don't want you following yeah. me. If you think that this is okay. So I, it just snapped and it dawned on me. I'm going to just yeah. stay epic. I don't care if you think that this is, this is the one page I can go to and not see what's going on in the world. Well, you know, it's me. I, I, this, is, this is affecting me. These things hurt me. These things make me cry. These things make me angry. These things make me just disgusted with the country that is so free, you know, so, so free, you know. So it's just like uh, um, I, I definitely have our, our oldest is aware. And, and um, sometimes it, it backfires. And not in a bad way, but just like, oh, my God, don't say that in front of, like, your grandma, your great grandma, you know. <laughs> so. Yeah, I, I got you. Yeah, it's very hard telling, telling an adolescent something, like I said, of such a magnitude and not expecting them to probably re, uh, uh, reverbitate it to someone else. So, yeah, yeah. Um, Half my family is white. And, you know, we don't really talk about these issues, uh, not, not face to face, because that's just kind of the dynamic of my extended family. 
Um, but some of them actually did reach out to me and just, you know, and my sister and my brother and probably even my dad and started like questioning stuff that they never did before. So um, that I feel like is a, is a step forward. And I don't believe anyone that is in my close family that I know from heart is racist by any means, but um, it's just something we never talk about because we're family. You know what I mean? It's just, we go to family reunions. Yeah. But it's like that that rule of thumb where they're like, you know, if, if you want a comfortable Thanksgiving, don't bring up politics at the table. Kind of you like, know, like, yeah, there's you don't need that animosity when you're around your loved ones. I, I completely understand. No, like I said, I watched everything that you were saying. Like I said, I, I watched people in your comments. I had the same people in my comments, um, you know, and, and I, I said basically the same thing. I, I don't give a fuck. I'm going to use, like I said, I'm a white Irish man here in America. And I was given white privilege just by birth, just by being born. But it's up to me. It's my choice how I use it. And so I, and I've all, and y'all both know this. I've always been this way. Um, but you're right. It was this one. It, it was, it was something about this, something about that man having his knee on his neck for eight minutes, um, 40 or, or 20 something seconds that just, uh, and the smirk on his face, it just, you're right, it got under me, and the Breonna Taylor one really got to me. A, a young black woman that's, in, that's uh, an EM, EMT, and, and there to save people, there to help people. Um, it does, it brings a lot of anger, and I just want to address this. I don't want to dive too deep into it, but I just know that y'all have a little one, and I know the questions we got, and I just imagine the millions of, of other Americans around the world, or um, um, the other Americans around the country that you know, had their 10 or 12 or 11 year old son or daughter asking them if, you know, is it safe for me to go outside? Is it, you know, you get a little older, how, how do I speak to the cops? Um, what should I do if I'm pulled over? Which I'm sure these are all conversations y'all will have, you know, like I said, at a more appropriate time, but um, I'm glad that y'all are being so proactive. That I like that, that that's definitely what we need. That, that's what we need, you know, is more conversations to happen. We, we try definitely. to with our kids we even have a hard time talking about santa claus trust me so it's like we try really hard to like you know not lie too much to them but not not lie where it affects their child I, so you know, a little little bit a little bit truth here a little bit of lie here you don't know which one is which you know take it how it is all right so let's get into it perez virtual fitness i, I i'm really excited because uh not that i know y'all um, but like you're talking about, you are half black and half white. Jeff is Mexican. I love it. A minority owned business. I, I, love it. I love it. And you know, me and my wife have our baking business, Addie Bear Sweets. And that's something that I think is great. Uh, uh, that's what I want. A minority owned business that you can go and support and you're not giving to these conglomerates where it's just these old white dudes at the very top, just sucking in all the damn money. Like, hell no. Um, so By I'm so the way, your, your wife's baking presentation is amazeballs. I, I consider myself a baker, but I don't have presentation. I'm just like, here it is. Eat it. Well, I, I take the pictures. Just so any of y'all know, I'm the photographer, okay? So I, hope cool. I, cool. I got a little bit of creative uh, uh, leniency on that as well. Um, so speak to me about Perez Virtual Fitness. Y'all have been trainers forever. Jeff, I met you as a trainer. Frankie, when you met Jeff, you got so into the fitness life. Um, what led up to this moment of owning your own virtual fitness company? You, re you ready to hear some shit? Let's hear it. <laughs> uh, it came down to um, working for people like local fitness in San Antonio, local business owners. Um, and being so loyal to them, bleeding their colors, spewing their, their logos or slogans and believing in it wholeheartedly and then getting tossed to the side. Uh, one, pe one set of group that, or one group I was with, um, they uh, basically said, because we were getting bought out by um, another gym and the people that were basically having to move from the gym we were at were moving to another facility and so they were talking about coaches to keep, and they were like, you can have Frankie. And I was like, what? That's cold. Like, you know, I was bleeding your colors. And then I worked with these people for several years. I even opened up a studio. I became uh, the, uh, the, basically the director of the studio. I hired people. I fired people. I auditioned people. I set the schedule. 
I did payroll. I, I hosted events and um, uh, charity events, things like that. And then um, we got bought out by another person. And this person hired somebody who was very, very mean verbally to the team members and said something where I was just like, I can't stand for this. And I can't work with somebody who's like this. And I was like, I got to go. And the dude that the owner that knew that I did all these things and brought in all this money, all this revenue, all these clients was like, all right, well, we'll see you. So I was like, okay, another, you know, another eye opener situation. And that's when I got into the corporate world. And funny you bring up, it's not funny, but it's just ironic that you brought up George Taylor, like, or George, sorry, George Taylor. Um, we put Print and Brianna Taylor together with um, that. But when Floyd, when the Floyd murder happened, um, I found out that week that I was getting fired from my corporate job. I was like, Wait, what? Like, I, and for that person that I was working for, I put in everything and all of it. Um, however, they were just going another way. And it dawned on me, this is going to continue to happen to me, no matter how hard I work, no matter how many people I bring to them, no matter how many coaches I get hired for them, no matter how I write out their program, no matter how I improve their program, just because of experience, somebody's going to kick me to the curb. The only person who can't kick me to the curb is me and him. Yeah. So, <laughs> this guy. So uh, Perez Fitness, I just decided on, because I ended up getting my, I was like, well, I'm getting my two weeks paid vacation before I just out this place. Mm -hmm. And um, I used that two weeks to just build this wholeheartedly. Like I said, I started this uh, in November of 2017. It's going to be three years in November. I started, oh, wow. yeah, I started doing virtual training and, and for, uh, as of November, it'll be three years. But I actually decided to make this, and I was working at other places when I was doing virtual fitness. And now that this is all I got, I, I can't, I can't fire me. I can't, I can't get mad at me when I sexually harass myself. That, that's for me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you can fuck your ass all day long. No one's I mean, going I down go for HR. it. I go to HR. I go to HR. I the HR. So I look at him like, bitch, you brought this on yourself. Looking like that. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Like. That, that's a really big thing. That's a very, that's a very us, our generation thing yeah. that we're realizing that we don't need to be so much like our parents' generation of, of working for people. If you want to check on them. We don't need to be so much of, of working for people and, and having to, you know, make the money for them, but not get to keep anything in the end. It's yeah. something like me and my wife been talking about, like living in apartments. It's like, you're making all the money for them, but when you move out, you don't keep anything for yourself. You lost everything that you put into it. And it's exactly like that. And that was a big reason, I'll tell y'all, that I really love what y'all are doing because that was a big reason why me and my wife, um, like you said, she's an incredible baker and I've been watching her do it for so long. And finally this, uh, we're two and a half years in. Um, finally last year, I just said, uh, or no, I'm sorry, we're, uh, we're in our second year, a year and a half in. And I just said, it's time that we work for ourselves. It's time that we build something that will be ours in the end, not someone else's. And I can tell y'all with radio, it's the exact same way. They walk in, they hand you the pink slip, they give you your severance and you are gone. It's, yeah. it's you, you leave in that day type of mentality. Someone just saw you 10 minutes ago. You are not, you don't walk around and say bye to people. You're gone. Yeah. That's it. And it is a crummy feeling. I'm kind of with you. You know, um, you put so many hours in, you put your heart into it. You're bleeding their, their brand. When yeah. in reality, why weren't you building your brand? You know? Um, I ain't gonna learn that lesson again. I'll put it like that. I'm not Jeff, gonna- Jeff is, this, uh, Jeff, is this something you've always had in mind? Cause I know you've always personal trained. You're a big, you're, you were an athlete in, in high school. I, I mean, I, I, you know what I'm saying? You, is this always been something that's been kind of an end goal? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we, we always wanted to open up our own spot, you know what I mean? But I guess this whole pandemic has, like, really, like, pushed us to, like, really focus on what we know best, you know, basically. Mm -hmm. So um, the virtual fitness is just a, something that we can reach out to, to more people, you know what I mean, and, and, and be able to – to share what we want with them to help them reach their goals and help them become a healthier version of themselves, you know? So it's like, 
this is definitely something that we've always like had on the back burner, but we just, I guess, didn't know how to make that approach. You know we what also I mean? wanted to be like solid parents to our kids. And it's really yeah. hard to do that and go and run a business at a facility over here and then come home. And if there's a problem, you're going back into work, you know, mm -hmm. whereas from here where we actually do our, our classes, which is in our garage, Oh, we probably should have had the, the whole thing set up in there so you can see where you can see our workspace. But um, hey, I, I was going to text you about that and be like, hey, wherever y'all want to set up, I know y'all got your badass fitness area in the garage. So I was like, y'all could have done that too. Hey, don't you worry. My well, thing is personal my, level. You're in our home. Very simple setup. Very simple. I was just talking about this. You see so many people with the theatrics, the the visuals, the just the, the money put into it. But yeah. something. It's the simplest things that really push you ahead of them. So yeah. um, I really like that. I like everything that y'all are doing. What I've really liked about both of y'all, explain to me the caring side. I worked at Spectrum for, I think, three years. Then I went back to Gold's right before I, right before I got hired at the radio station. I was there for maybe about a year and a half. There's the trainers that you know are really there that really want to see the outcome. They really want to see the change. There's others that just want to see the dollar sign. That is not y'all. What, what is it? What, what, how, is it just natural for both of y'all? I want to say like, like the way you started this, you know, using your position or your platform to lift others. Like uh, there, I have been through some shit. Like from childhood to even young adulthood, I have been through hell and back. I've had a gun in my face. I've been raped. I've been through hell and back. And when I got healthy, as far as like eliminating bullshit food out of my life, eliminating toxic people from my life, eliminating um, circumstances that could put me in danger, like just avoiding it, just start throwing my brain in the mix of, you know, my choices. I really found a beautiful way of living my life. And then... God bless me with a phenomenal partner who compliments my crazy ass, you know, personality. Yeah. And we have been going strong for a long time, but I feel like his personality, he's so genuine and he's so chill, but he, he wants to see people succeed because that's just who he is. And after, I don't, I'm only speaking for myself. Once you go to crap and then you find the good stuff, it's like you want to spread it because you know, there's people who've been around you or people who you may know who have been through some crap too. Um, and if they get a little piece of that good stuff, then that might motivate them to change everything. And the way I see it is yeah. if I'm spreading goodness, then maybe I can touch somebody in, a, in an emotional, mental, or even physical workout way where they want to spread goodness. And when you love yourself, you can spread love easily. And when more people love themselves and the less George Floyd stuff, happens, the less Breonna Taylor stuff happens, the less room we have to allow people to act and behave in such a hateful manner. And I'm just kind of tired of just, you know, abuse in general, all sorts and all forms of abuse, whether it's in a relationship or it's whether with a whole country and a group of people. Like, I just feel like the best that I can do is uh, be positive and try to see people um, grow in positivity as well. And the beautiful thing about fitness is when you help somebody drop five pounds, 10 pounds, 20, 60, 70, 100 pounds, they change. And most of them I've seen, almost all of them that have been between Jeff and I, like helping them guide them, um, their change is incredibly positive. And, and it spreads around them in yeah. their lives. Yep. And I'm just like, there, there really isn't anything else that pays better than that. I, I, I can't, there, it's not money, because it's yeah. One of, okay, prime example, uh, a friend of mine, she has like this trainer and he trains like, you know, swimsuit models and like figure, figure competition or competitors, things like that. And he charges a arm and a leg for his prop, for his, uh, his training, his professional. Training. That's cool. That's really cool. But those aren't the people that are going to make an impact amongst other people. Those people That's are in for their own. And we want to make sure fitness is available for all body types and all pocket types. So like financially, we try to get a program that should be affordable and could be affordable for all people. And you know what I mean? Like, it's just our, our demographic isn't rich people. We don't really need that. You know, that, I mean, nothing wrong with rich people. 
Ain't nothing wrong with yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, if they want to buy from y'all, you're not yeah, shutting them out. Let me tell y'all, rich people watching, y'all, for Res Virtual Fitness, <laughs> invest right now, please. We're not cheap, but we are very strong advocates of quality. Like, quality is everything. You will smile when, when you work out with us. You might swear when you work out with us, and you sure as hell are going to sweat, and you're going to have a good time. Actually, one of our clients just told us on uh, Wednesday that she, since she started with us, she lost 20 pounds. Wow. And it's only been virtual. We haven't met in person, um, other than kickboxing in the park. But that's like only like once or twice a month. But yeah, she lost 20. Another one said she lost 20. A lot of them are losing inches, five pounds, 10 pounds. So it's, it's, a, it's, that's the payoff. I get really excited. Like I start, I stop class and I start jumping around and acting like an idiot. Cause like, it's so awesome. Like, how can you have yet? So, no, no, no. And, and I know exactly what you're talking about. Let me tell y'all, you know, I've, I've, I've always been a thin, I've always, I was just naturally thin. Um, my metabolism is still crazy. My energy is just through the roof. I'm, I just turned 32 in July and I feel like I'm, God, I feel like I'm 22. And my fitness journey started this past fall just because I was starting to look at myself at the radio station and just, it's so funny. People would think I, I was weighing around 210, uh, I'm six foot. So I'm even sure people like y'all would be like, oh, that's, that's not even close to bad. But I was looking at myself personally and just waking up and just like someone that's so full of confidence like me was feeling so unconfident. And October, I started it and I got to it. And I'm happy to say right now, I am 20 pounds uh, down. I weigh 190. Um, yeah. Dang. And uh, you know, it's funny. Even my wife has noticed, man. I, I take the shirt off in the mirror and I'm smiling. I'm happy. I'm feeling good. I can't wait to go to the pool. You know, <laughs> yeah. we work out at the park. We work out at OP. And you're damn right. That shirt is off every time. I never <laughs> work out like that without a shirt on. I know. I see Jeff. I see Jeff with the shirt off all the time, man. I'm a little jealous. I'm a little <laughs> envious of that. Um, but I'll be there. Um, but yes, I know what you mean. It's that, yeah, man, it feels good. It, it feels good when you look good and you're right. Y'all are doing something that is so, um, uh, I can't think, underrated of just working out and looking good. People think that money will make you feel better. They think expensive trips will make you feel better. A big house will make you feel better. And it could be the simplest thing of just getting back into shape, getting the getting a, maybe the, the the four pack, whatever. But having a little something down there uh, that looks good, it really it is makes, a great. Thing. It makes the vacation even better. It does. It does. <laughs> what sucks is I'm down all this weight, and my plan was to look good for the summer. And damn it, they took it away from me. They took <laughs> it. Away. <laughs> hey, once again, catching up with Matt, episode ten. The one and only Perez Virtual Fitness, Frankie Jeff. Thank you so much for being on. Let me run through these names real quick. Uh, Nino, Arnold Nino works with us. At, uh, hey! Uh, I'm so very good with Nino. Uh, Gel so, uh, uh, Gel Loso M, uh, Joseph Shalpi, H Pazio, Nessa G21, Tiny Someone, my boy Carlton hey! Zoops in the building. Um, shout out everyone on the show right now, man. Like always, like always, fueled by Jameson. I'm not sponsored yet, but y'all gonna sponsor me soon. Y'all gonna say something soon. Get this man a sponsorship. Uh, I really like what you touched on, Frankie, and I want to go back to that real quick. You said you found yourself an amazing partner in life. That is a very big key, and it's not easy for everyone to find. I was so blessed to be working at Olive Garden at the time that this little cute little shorty this little Latina walked on through to the training class. I saw her right away. I saw other guys looking, and I said, y'all back up. Better <laughs> back the hell up. I'm, I'm going. I start throwing bones. Um, but, but, but a great life partner is such a difference. That, that, to me, could be the difference in success. And y'all have done it. I feel like we've done it. Jeff, this one's for you. Talk to me about working side by side with your wife um, for so many years. Because me and Lori, we worked together for two years at Olive Garden and for two years at um, Paisano's. We worked every shift together. We drove to work together, already living together. It was 24 seven, but it never was overwhelming, never. Um, what's that been like these past, what, this past decade? Maybe 12 years? 
I mean, yes. I, I just have to say, I mean, I love it. I mean, I, I love just seeing her grow in this whole fitness industry. You know what I mean? I, I've seen her from the bottom and now she's here. You know what I mean? It's like, it's- Hey, look, look, I see that, I see that, hey. <laughs> so it's like, I, I wouldn't have it any other way. You know, I, I know most, most people will say like, I don't know how y'all can work together, being a couple, being married, you know, and being around each other the, the majority of the time. But it's like, I just, I, I found somebody that loves doing the things that I enjoy as well. And yeah. it's just great to be able to, to have that and go through life with that, you know? Uh, yeah. No, I mean, I, I think it's cool because it's like, you know, when your, your wife's doing something else, you're doing something else. And um, it's like, kind of like the end of the day, you're catching up on each other's lives, but it's, it's like, Oh, okay. You know, let's catch up. And now it's time for bed. It's like, it, y'all been kind of like us. You've gotten just to, walk every step together and what i really like about it that's why i put this on the the thing i typed up for y'all to, to pitch this this week's show was you know i really feel like y'all are setting the example um for families and we need family examples out there i come from a single mom and it's tough when your dad's not in your life um it's tough when your mom's not in your life when you just have that one piece uh it's tough when your parents are fighting um, it's tough when they're going through a divorce and you're maybe 11 or 12 years old or something, but I, I'm, I'm just, I'm really proud of y'all, which is, I'm not, that's weird to say like, oh, I'm, I'm so proud of y'all. Y'all made it this far. Good job. Like, but I'm just proud of y'all because y'all such, such a, such a great example that when me and my wife have children, uh, I want to get to follow that exact example that kind of y'all have laid out there for so many families. I'm sure the people that work out with y'all think the exact same thing of, Wow, y'all work so great together, you know? We, we, uh, we ain't always been perfect. So, <laughs> we're, we're, yeah, kind of, I know how it is. I know how it is. We don't have the unicorns and the fairies dancing around us 24 7. Maybe, uh, 16 7, you know? Uh, I don't know, but, um, it's, uh, it's, it's been a challenge, but I do know there was times where he was trying to, um, find another career path. Um, not for any particular reason, but just, just to see. And um, when he stopped working alongside of me, like, I felt that. And, and I almost, like, had to, like, re, like re, reset because I'm so used to, you know, met him at work. And we mm -hmm. just like you and your wife, like, we used to drive the cars together or, like, he would pick me up or even, like, he would let me use his car and I'd go home and come pick him up in his car and just, you know, we did all of that. So that happened for so many years. Like it was like nonstop. Like you said, once the first date happened, it was, it was done. It was a done deal. And um, then when he, when like several years into our marriage, he tried another job. And I just, I just, uh, even when like, when he was still at Gold's and I was at another place, it was weird. And eventually he came to that place where I was at because also Gold's was not, you know, they don't take care of their employees and they don't take care of the clients. But um, yeah, shout out to Gold's <laughs> anyway. So. Well, that's so funny that you say Gold's because uh, when me and my wife left the restaurant life, um, she got hired at the Hyatt and then I got hired at Gold's. And you're right, you know, things would tick me off and I was so used to being able to go right to her and yeah. tell her how I was feeling right at that moment so that way I wasn't carrying it with me the whole fucking night and putting it on to other people. And it, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I felt like a, a child leaving like their mom for kindergarten the first time. Like I almost was like, man, how do I, how do I maneuver? Yeah, without you constantly around me. Yeah. Like I said, I think that y'all done a great job. Um, I think that y'all done a great job running a business together. That's tough, you know, a lot of numbers come into play. Um, with our business right now, you know, it's a lot of discussing numbers and prices and marketing strategies. I have my way, she's got her way. And it's very, um, the creative process sometimes is a little tough because I, I see it in my head how it should be and she sees it how she should be, but she's the baker. I'm, I ain't shit, I ain't shit in this life stuff. <laughs> I do the dishes. So I completely, you know, I can, I can see how so, like Jeff said, how so many people think it's so tough, but if you're able to find that middle ground, that mutual respect for each other and respect each other's creative process, 
and ideas. And I think that's what y'all do. I think that's the path to success if you are working with your significant other, your wife, your girlfriend. So um, I, I think that's great. Uh, what I want to do right here is I've got a couple more questions for y'all. This is going to cut off in like five minutes. I say, let's just end it real quick and let's just jump right back on because I want to learn more about Perez Virtual Fitness and how people can take advantage of y'all's program and y'all's personal training while quarantine is still going on. For people that don't know, me and my wife have gone nowhere. Today is quarantine day 149 for me and the wifey. 24 hours together. Nope. We work out together, food together, everything. Um, and, uh, you know, we're still not going to the gym. We're still doing our workouts outside. But I want people to be able to take advantage of y'all's program. Like I said, let's jump right back in and let's finish up this conversation because it's a good combo. Cool. All right, so I'm going to let y'all go. Once again, catch on back. Episode 10, the one and only Perez Virtual Fitness in the building. We're jumping right back on, baby. Y'all jump right back in because we're going to be coming right back.